23-year-old Daylene Carlson from Stockton, California, went out to Finnegan's Pub before she disappeared in the late morning hours of August 7, 2011. Daylene recently moved in with her aunt, Maggie Baker, in June of 2011 to start her life as an independent young adult in California. Just three months later, Daylene disappears after a night out with friends and fails to come home before her 1 a.m. curfew. She was last seen at 12.48 a.m. on the bar surveillance footage cozying up to a mystery man with a backwards hat and goatee. The man turns out to be 25-year-old Jason Gilly, an acquaintance to Daylene and her cousin. Since he is more than likely the last person to talk to Daylene before she disappeared, the authorities get in contact with him to set up an at-home interview. Jason tells police that he and Daylene were planning on leaving the bar together, but he had to go home unexpectedly because his young son fell ill. Jason recommends the authorities talk to Daylene's ex-boyfriend Jacob, who she was in contact with that same evening. Jacob is then brought in for further questioning after being spotted on the bar surveillance footage at around 1.09 a.m. after an extended Intensive interrogation, Jacob is cleared of any suspicion when he gives his testimony and notifies authorities that Daylene mentioned a new man in her life by the name of James. Detectives jump on the new lead and after investigating James, his location on the night of Daylene's disappearance is verified to be nowhere near the Stockton area, so he is cleared as a suspect, and it looks as though his detectives are back to square one. However, James provides a vital clue that eventually leads detectives to apprehending the correct suspect. He informs authorities that Daylene sent him a text the night of her disappearance, letting him know that she was going to go to a friend's house to continue to drink after leaving Finnegan's pub. It's the lead detectives are hoping for and they begin compiling a list of 24-hour liquor stores open in the area. If Daylene and her friend did continue to party, they more than likely went to one of these locations to purchase more alcohol. Now there is only one store in the nearby area that is open that late, a food for less that has 24-hour surveillance cameras. And it's a stretch but the lead pays off when the grocery store surveillance footage shows Daylene walking into food for less at exactly 1.25 a.m. with Jason Gilly by her side. Jason Gilly has now been caught in a lie about driving home to attend to his ailing son and is brought in for a second interview. In his second testimony, Jason said he left the bar with Aileen, then he forgot that he went to food for less to pick up alcohol, but dropped her off back at Finnegan's before heading home to his son. In his third story, Jason admitted to bringing Daylene back to his house, and she then accompanied him as he made two marijuana sales between the hours of 2 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. He claims while he was taking Daylene back to her aunt's house, she was aggressively drunk and wanted to get out of the vehicle before reaching her destination. By the fourth story, Jason told detectives he and Daylene had consensual sex on a couch in his back patio. Jason then claims that 30 to 40 minutes later, he was driving Daylene home when she began violently screaming at him. He claims he dropped her off on the Crosstown Freeway in Stockton, then he got gas shortly afterwards and drove back home before 5 a.m. When reviewing surveillance video from the gas station he visited, we see that that statement contradicts the video when he arrives at the gas station between 10 and 10.30 a.m., not the 5 a.m. time frame he originally testified. And on the surveillance footage, Jason is seen inspecting his vehicle and brushing dried mud off of his shoulder. Although this is highly suspicious behavior, it isn't enough to incriminate Jason and he walks away a free man, until Daylene's body is discovered on October 17, 2011, by a tractor operator harvesting corn in Escalone, California. Her body was found with a total of three gunshot wounds, one to the back of her skull and two to her abdominal area. Detectives testified her body was without any clothing and several 22 caliber casings were found at the site of the body's location. A strike of luck helps detectives incriminate Jason when they receive an anonymous tip that he has an unregistered firearm that matches the 22 caliber casings found at the scene of the crime. Jason Gilly is found guilty that same October of 2011 for kidnapping and killing 23-year-old Daylene Carlson. Police say Daylene knew Jason for about a week before she disappeared that night of August 7, 2011. They believe the night she went missing, she willingly left Finnegan's pub with Jason, as confirmed by CCTV footage. From the bar, directly to your house. Didn't make any stops. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. I left the bar with dealing to food for us. I bought a bottle of Jaeger. Jason changes his story. I said, do you want to come back to the house, crash on the couch? Uh, she said, okay. Unbeknownst to his grandmother, Jason didn't come home alone. Jason, let's make it better. Let's make it better right now, okay? Did you guys have sex? No. Jason. Jason, or... Jason. Thanks, I mean, we...
and out for a little bit more, and then she said she wanted to go home. Through his tears, Jason tells a new tale that he was driving Daylene home in the early hours of Sunday morning when they had an argument. She went out of the car, sir. She what? She just got out of the car. I don't know. Just drove. I think I even got gas at the. But they think Jason is still hiding something. They push him to reveal what really happened to Daylene. And no what else has slipped your mind, Jason? No. Jason. 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 No. Where are we going to find a body? Help, Help us find her. Jason. Help us bring her home. Her family deserves it. Do you have a family? She has a family. She deserves it. I know that. She does. So I'm not doing anything to her. Jason. Don't do this. Please, really. Jason. With that, the interview is over. Police say inconsistencies in Jason's statements and the anonymous tip of him having an unregistered firearm led to his arrest two months after Daylene went missing. A dozen witnesses testified during Jason's hearing, revealing in part that Jason gave a false alibi, changed his story multiple times, and was in possession of the murder weapon during the night Daylene was killed execution style. And ballistic evidence further confirmed the link between Jason's gun and Daylene's gunshot wounds, which only further solidified Jason's guilty verdict. The jury found Jason guilty of murder with a deadly weapon during the commission of a kidnapping, but couldn't charge him with sexual assault as Daylene's body was too badly decomposed at the time of the discovery. When researching the story, I stumbled upon Jason Gilley's inmate pen pal biography where he encourages women to send him selfies and write letters to him in prison. And according to the Stockton Police Department, Jason Gilley was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And he is currently serving his life sentence at the San Joaquin County Jail. Had it not been for the impromptu plan to shop at the 24-hour Food for Less, Daylene's family would have never known what happened to her on that tragic August night.